Hey, what's going on guys? I haven't really had much time to work on videos in the last few days, but I'm back at it with another Eidolon hunting video. Today's video is going to be going over Volt, his role in the fight, and my personal Volt build. Volt is honestly my favorite frame to play for the Eidolon hunt, and that's because his shield gives you a lot of utility and power in taking down both the Eidolon shields and the Eidolon itself. And that's because Volt shields increase your crits by 200%, as well as giving your shots 50% electricity damage per shield you shoot through. And I'll show how that works in a little bit, but let's start out by quickly looking at my Volt build, and then I'll show some gameplay for Volt, and talk a little bit about it. For Eidolon hunting with Volt, you really want high efficiency, decent duration, and good cast speed. Cast speed and efficiency are really going to give you some great quality of life for playing Volt. And that's because you're going to want to put down your shields as fast as possible, and having high efficiency also allows you to reposition them quite often if needed. So to achieve this in my build, I'm running Fleeting Expertise and Streamline for efficiency, with Natural Talent and Speed Drift for cast speed. By picking these up, I'm able to cast my shields often and quickly, which you'll see during the gameplay. I also have Vitality here for a little survivability, as well as Narrow Minded and Prime Continuity, which gives me 200% duration, which is more than enough for the fight. And I also have Prime Flow here, which gives me a little working room to cast more shields. But depending on your build, having Flow or Prime Flow might not be optimal. Here I've partly taken it because of how my Volt is formed. And I have it formed this way just so I can use multiple different builds with Volt. In practice, this is about a 2-3 forma build, depending on whether or not you're using Prime mods. So don't see my 9 forma here and be intimidated. I have that many invested in Volt because I've changed my build a few times. And finally, I'm running Corrosive Projection with Coaction Drift to strip the Eidolon's armor. And if you want to know more about that, I'd suggest watching my armor stripping video, which I'll link to above. And finally for my arcane here, I have two arcane nullifiers equipped to give me 100% resistance to magnetic procs. The most important elements of this build are really the efficiency and the cast speed. Duration is nice, you just don't want it to be negative. You really don't need any range because shields aren't affected by range, and they are the main ability we're going to be using during the hunt. And if you want to, you could also run something like Transistor Shield to help charge Volt's Static Discharge buff which is a Volt passive that gives him stacking electricity damage as he moves across the ground. It's definitely not a great DPS increase, but it will give you extra damage if you're using Volt to shoot the Eidolon. Or you could also run the Shock Trooper Augment, which you can cast on allies to give them an electricity damage buff. This Augment scales with both power strength and duration, so if you're using it, you might want to invest in those. Honestly, I don't particularly find either of these Augments necessary, but if your group is struggling on DPS, you could use Shock Trooper. And if you like the utility of moving shields around, as well as giving you a little extra damage, Transistor Shield is fine, but that's pretty much my Volt build. Now let's look at the weapons I'm going to be using. Here's my Lanka build, and my Sikris build, and this is what I'm running on my Kavat. And as for your melee weapon, you can really use whatever you want, whether it be a regular melee or a Sarpa. And for your Focus School, you're probably going to want to run Madurai with Void Strike. So now that we've taken a look at the build, let's look at some Volt gameplay during the hunt. Volt's main job is to place shields in front of the Eidolon in a way so that the operators can shoot their alt fire and gain the 200% increased critical damage buff from the shields. Now it's important to know here that the extra 50% electricity damage that the shields give you doesn't apply for your operator's damage to the Eidolon shields, which means that stacking multiple of them won't increase operator damage on the Eidolon shields. However, if you do stack more than one of them, it does give you a better chance to one-shot both the Eidolon's shield and its knees in one hit with your Operator's alt fire. This is because while the electricity damage doesn't apply to the Eidolon shields, it will apply to the Eidolon itself. Which means that by shooting through six of them, you're going to give your Operator 300% lightning damage on top of the crit damage buff. And this only happens when using the alt fire from the Shrak Sun Scaffold. I went over this more in depth in my Operator video. But basically, the Shrak Sun Scaffold has two different components to its fire. It has a main projectile, and it also has a secondary explosion when that projectile either impacts an object or reaches its max fire distance, which is about 10 meters. And using this alt fire, you can take down the Eidolon shield and its knee in one hit. And that's because the first shot will take down the shields, and the secondary explosion will kill the limb. Which is possible with a high enough Void Strike stack, or a high Void Strike stack with the Unara Wisp buff. You're not really going to see this outside of organized group play, and it's only going to save you a few seconds on each hunt. So while it's good to be aware of, I really wouldn't rely on this method outside of organized groups. But your main priority should always be placing the shields so it's easy for operators to shoot through. You want the shields to be close enough to the Eidolon so that you or your team can grab Unara Wisps that are dropping at its feet and then move into position to take down the Eidolon shields. As far as exact shield placement, I wouldn't really say that there's one place or the other that's always best. 
I find it's typically up to what you or your group's preference is. But be aware, the closer you're able to get it to the Eidolon's feet where the Wisps spawn, the easier it is for your team to move into position and take down the shields. Typically for me, I put it at an angle directed at the Eidolon's crotch, which you can see here. Or you can also do something like build a wall with your shields, which will give a bigger area for teammates to both shoot through with their operators, or possibly shoot through to gain a damage bonus to the limbs. Which brings me to the next important function for Volt Shields during the fight. When you shoot through a Volt Shield, whether it be with your operator or with a weapon, the shield will multiply any critical hits you deal by 200%, meaning that if you're hitting a shot for 1000 damage, that shot's now going to be 2000 damage. And this will apply to both your operator's amps as well as your weapons. I really can't stress enough how good doubling your crit damage is with the Volt Shields. And while you can stack and shoot through multiple shields, this 200% multiplier only applies once regardless of how many shields you have. This really comes into play when taking down the Eidolon for the last time. Just before the Eidolon finally stands up, you want to make sure you have 6 shields placed in a position where whoever's shooting can take down the Eidolon. Now it's important to note here that the electricity damage buff from the Volt Shields doesn't apply evenly to all weapons. And what I mean by that is that with projectile weapons, the electricity element will combine with other elements on your gun. So with a projectile based sniper like the Lanka, the 300% electricity damage will combine with your radiation damage on the weapon. Which can be important because as I talked about during my armor stripping video, the Eidolons take extra damage from radiation. However, with hitscan weapons like the Vectus or the Rubico, the electricity damage won't combine with other elements on your gun, meaning that it won't increase any radiation damage you have. You'll just gain the plain electricity damage. Overall, this isn't super important to worry about because you're still going to want to stack 6 shields regardless just to get the extra damage, but it is good to be aware that if you're not using a projectile based weapon, your elementals won't combine, which really just means that the Lanka is better with Volt Shields than things like the Rubico or the Vectus. But let's get back to the final shield placement. You typically want to have the shields in front of the Eidolon when it stands up, giving you or the other players on your team a good line of sight for the Eidolon's head. Depending on your duration, you can place this early or just before it stands up for the last time. I typically do this when my operator runs out of energy while I'm charging Void Strike, put the shields down in a position I think is good, and then go back to charging my Void Strike for the next Eidolon. Here you see me shooting simply because I'm running a public bounty, and I don't have a DPS player to use my shields, but if you had a DPS player like Rhino or Chroma, then they're probably going to be the ones to take down the Eidolon for the last time. That being said, Volt is an amazing DPS for public bounties, and that's because you can give yourself shields anytime you want. You don't need to wait for a teammate to be in position, you can just give yourself 200% damage on demand. Especially with Alanka, you're going to have no problem taking down any of the Eidolon's Sonovas or the Eidolon itself, which is really why I enjoy running Volt for public bounties. He helps you take down the shields faster, and allows you to kill the Eidolon easily. If I were to run a Warframe like Chroma or Rhino, I'd certainly be able to take down the limbs, but it'd be harder for me to take down the shields without a Volt. But if you are going to play Volt in a public bounty, you better be sure you have a Trinity in your group, or at least some other healer to ensure the lures don't die. But if you're playing Volt in a group, your main job is just going to be taking down shields, and making sure your own shields are in good position for your teammates. Volt is also a pretty good backup DPS in case your main DPS is unable to shoot the target for whatever reason. I also want to mention your Volt's energy color here, because it'll affect the color of your shields. You really want to have either a dark color or some kind of neutral color to make it easier to see where you're shooting the Eidolon during the fight. There's already going to be a lot of bright flashes and visuals that make it hard to see what you're doing during the Eidolon hunt. And you don't want to add to that confusion with your Volt shields. So try to get a color that's easy to see through. I typically use like a darker blue, but it's up to you really. I think that's going to cover it for the Volt video. So to recap, Volt shields are good at both taking down the Eidolon shields as well as the Eidolon itself by enhancing your critical damage and giving you extra electricity damage. And to ensure you can place shields as easily as possible, you want to have high cast speed and lots of efficiency. And that's going to do it for me today, guys. If you found the video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Hope you guys all have a good one, and I'll see you later.